I'm Albie Milano, Arthur Avenue, Belmont, Bronx, New York City, United Earth, Starfleet Crewman First Class, Operations Division, USS Hamilton. In addition to and alongside my Starfleet duties, I am also the union rep for the Hamilton's Vehicle Maintenance Department, which is why you're talking to me right now. When I say union, I'm talking about the union of non-commissioned officers. UNCO is what we say ordinarily to save time. UNCO is the union that represents the interests of Starfleet non-commissioned officers, aka non-coms, aka enlisted personnel. When you're talking about the enlisted personnel, you're basically talking about the workforce of the service, where the mechanics, such as myself, where the technicians, the specialists, the corpsmen, the yeomen, whatever Starfleet vessel or facility you happen to be in or on, we're the ones that keep that place running. We're not officers, we're not academy graduates, but we have specialized training, we're highly skilled, we have the experience, we know how to get things done, and none of this runs without us. Starfleet without the enlisted personnel would be like, I don't know, uniforms without pockets. <laughs> Who would even think of that? What's the point? As a union rep, it is my job to represent the union to the other members in my department, to communicate with them on the union's behalf, and to communicate to the union on their behalf. So if any of them have a problem they need the union's help with, they bring it to me and then I take it to the union. Why do we need the union? Well, you know, I might say we need the union because you asked me that question. And I'm not taking a shot at you by saying that, don't take that the wrong way, but it should be obvious why we need the union, I think. Like I said, the union represents the interests of the enlisted personnel of Starfleet to make sure they get fair treatment, fair wages and benefits, don't get overworked, don't get pushed around by the officers, and so on. And the way we represent those interests is through solidarity, and collective bargaining, and the weapon of last resort that we always have in our pocket that we don't want to use, but which we will use if it becomes necessary, is our right to strike, which is a weapon the union leadership is currently contemplating using, unless Starfleet Command takes its head out of its ass during these present ongoing negotiations. They don't want to strike. We don't want to strike, but last week the union voted overwhelmingly to authorize a strike. It was something like 99% in favor. That's ridiculous. You don't get 99% of people to agree on anything unless it's, I don't know, do you want cheese on your pizza? So Starfleet Command, think about that and take heed. How committed is the union to striking if necessary? As committed as we are to having cheese on pizza. That kind of unity is unbreakable. Don't test it. There is actually a traditional pizza without cheese. It's called pizza marinara, and it's delicious if you find somebody who can make it right, but that's beside the point. You want to know why we need the union? A few months ago, one of the guys in the shop comes to me and says that he was repairing the coolant system on one of the shuttle pods, and when he's done, he looks for a plasma welder so he can reattach the outer panel, and he can't find one. So he goes and tells his division officer about it, and his division officer says, just use an EM-33. An EM-33 fires a plasma bolt. How are you supposed to weld with one of those? What's he going to do? Shoot around the edge of the panel and hope he doesn't hit one of the oxygen tanks? It's preposterous. That's like somebody asking you for a hammer and you say, Oh, just use that torpedo warhead. It'll be fine. When someone higher up on the chain of command than you are tells you to do something dangerous and ridiculous, you need to be able to say no because you know better and not worry about suffering any repercussions. That's why we need the union. Because when an officer gives you an order like that, you should have the right to tell them to go space themselves. In a manner of speaking. If you do that literally, even if they've got it coming, that's gonna be in subordination. And as your union rep, I will represent you during the disciplinary hearing, but you're gonna take a rip for that. Union's no substitute for using your head. But you see what I'm saying. If an officer wants to do something nutty, let them do it. <laughs> Officers flying around on starships doing things they aren't qualified to do, trying to hotshot and improvise their ways out of sticky situations. Sure, that's how Starfleet ought to do business. Good luck with that. I don't know how much you or anybody watching this knows about the history, but these rights we're currently exercising, they are hard won, you know? There was a time when belonging to a labor union was illegal for members of the military. And I know they always say, Starfleet's not military, Starfleet's not military. Okay, you give me another word for it that fits and I'll use that instead. 
Until then, we all know what it is. They say uniformed service. What is that? Nobody knows what that is. Last time I was on Earth, I stayed at a hotel where all the employees wore uniforms. Are they a uniform service? All due respect to the work they do, but come on. Anyway, I digress. Union membership for military members or uniform service members used to be illegal. That was a long time ago, back in the 1900s, the 2000s. Here we are, 2146, we live in a more enlightened time. We realize that if you're gonna have people putting their lives on the line, leaving home, leaving the planet, going to space for months or years at a time, they deserve to be able to take care of themselves and to hold the people who have authority over them accountable. Think about this, the Franklin just broke warp four. You know, you got maybe another four or five years and they'll have ships go on warp five. That'll take you a long way. If you're gonna be out there on the old final frontier, as they say, you're gonna want some guarantees, and UNCO can make sure Starfleet Command provides that. Once upon a time, they used to say that having a labor union would wreck the military, or whatever you want to call this, because it would erode cohesion between the officers and the enlisted. It would destroy readiness if the members could go on strike. Yeah, well, if Command does right by the non-coms, they won't ever have to worry about that, will they? It's not like... We're constantly looking around for reasons to go on strike. We signed up for this. We want to be here. We chose Starfleet. We accepted that following orders and serving under the officers is part of that deal. We just want to make sure it's a fair deal and have some leverage on our side just in case it's not a fair deal. You order me to crawl inside the nacelle tube and repair a power conduit, I'll do it. But I want some safety procedures in place and I want some PPE. I ain't trying to get cooked in there. Obviously, any time you walk off the job, it's a bad situation, but why would you have a problem with me having the option of walking off the job to force a fair deal unless you were planning on screwing me over? Exactly. What is the union asking for this time? Okay, that's pretty simple. Keep in mind, I am not personally involved in the negotiations, but what's been passed down to us from leadership is that there are at least two major sticking points. Number one, is higher wages. Of course it is. Starfleet is expanding, they're constructing more ships, freedom class ships like this one, they're kicking the NX program into high gear. Who builds those ships? We do. Who runs those ships? We do. Who's gonna build and run the new outposts they're gonna have to build to provide support for those ships? We are. And by the way, the union supports all of that. Build more ships, build more outposts, build faster engines, explore the universe, we're ready to go. It's important. But if it's important enough to do, it's important enough to pay us to do. Bottom line. Number two is a bit more specific, but it's also very important, and quite frankly, it's very disappointing that we're even having to argue this one, but we're asking for inertial dampers to be made standard for any area of a ship where personnel would be asked to go. So, when you're flying in space, you're traveling at very high speed, whether you're talking sublight or warp. If you gradually ramp up to that high speed or ramp down from it, you got no problems. But if you accelerate too quickly or you jump from sublight speed to warp speed, now you got problems because that kind of acceleration will throw everybody up against a bulkhead and then you don't have a crew anymore. You got bolognese sauce or if we're talking about a Vulcan ship, guacamole. The inertial damper system counteracts that effect, so you can speed up or slow down, jump to warp, jump out of warp without killing everybody. At present, that system is not required to be installed in every area of the ship, only designated areas where personnel are normally expected to be. But there are areas of ships where people do sometimes need to go in order to do a particular job where there is no inertial damper. Service ducts, access conduits, plasma relay rooms. Everybody knows to keep out of those areas when the ship is accelerating or decelerating or jumping to and from warp. But what happens if someday somebody gets stuck in one anyway? It's an accident waiting to happen. They need to fix it. Let me tell you something. Why do you think all these ships have artificial gravity everywhere on every deck? The Union asked for that. And back when they asked for it, what did command say? It would be cost prohibitive. It would extend construction times and new ships too far. It would be too much of a hassle to retrofit older ships. It's not necessary. Sound familiar? Same things they're saying about making the inertial dampers standard all over the ships. But guess what? They did it with artificial gravity. It worked. It made everybody happy. 
not just non-coms, not just Onko members, everybody. And the same thing is going to happen this time, just as soon as Starfleet Command screws its head on the right way and comes to the table with a good deal. <laughs> Why are they so reluctant to give the Union what it wants? Why are they ever so reluctant to give the Union what it wants? They don't want to spend anything. They don't want to give up anything. Let me tell you something. I'm not trying to take anything away from humanity and all that we've accomplished in the last, what, 80 some odd years since the Vulcans got here. We've managed to clean this place up pretty nice now that we know the rest of the universe is paying attention. War, injustice, discrimination, most of that is gone, or at least way better than it used to be, and we should give ourselves a lot of credit for that. But human beings are still human beings. You know what I mean? Some of us still want things to be a pyramid, and we want to be on the top. We don't want the people lower down coming up here. Now, is that a popular thing to say? Maybe not, but you tell me I'm wrong. You ever hear the story, speaking of artificial gravity, which I was a moment ago, you ever hear the story of what Command wanted to do instead of installing artificial gravity? No? Oh, okay, you'll love this. So, they invent artificial gravity. Guess what their first idea was? Not to install it in the deck, so that everybody on that deck could walk around on it. No, that will make too much sense. Gravity boots. You know, like the kind they got on EV suits now? Starfleet Command was going to issue gravity boots as part of the standard officer's uniform. Did you catch that? Standard officer's uniform, as in commissioned officers. They said gravity boots would be issued to enlisted personnel on an as-needed basis. They actually proposed that in writing during that contract negotiation. Again, I wasn't there personally. This was a little before my time, but everybody in the union knows this story. Can you believe that? Serving on ships where the officers get to walk on the floor while all the non-coms have to float around like astronauts from a hundred years ago. They even tried to make it sound like they were doing us a favor. They said, oh, this is better for the non-coms because this way they won't have to crawl through access tubes or climb ladders. They're helping us out. Yeah, you're really helping out my musculoskeletal system wasting away while I float through this tin can. Unbelievable. But that's the mentality we're dealing with. It's always been this way. The particulars change, but the mentality stays the same. How'd they finally wipe out poverty on Earth? They spent money on it. They gave money to people who didn't have it. They gave resources to people that didn't have it. Is there any reason why we couldn't have done that 200 years ago? No. Why'd it take so long? Pyramid mentality. Holds us all back. But I'll say this for the pyramid sitters, they do eventually come around. The ones in Starfleet, anyway. They take way longer to do it than they need to. They make the whole process so much more difficult than it needs to be, but they come around. Not that they have a choice. Starfleet is the people who do the work. Without them, it doesn't exist. You'd think after all these years, the people who control Starfleet would get that unless they give a fair deal to the people who create Starfleet, there ain't gonna be any Starfleet. And hopefully with this contract negotiation, the bosses will come around and there won't be a need for us to... Give me a second. Okay, I just got word from the union and, well folks, looks like I just got promoted. So, right now we're headed back to Space Dock and once we're there, the ship, all the ships are gonna stay there until we agree on a fair contract because the non-coms are on strike. Two more questions? Okay, two more questions. How long do I think the strike will last? Uh, hopefully not long, but it's not up to me. It's not up to any of us. It's up to command. Bosses call strikes. Bosses have the responsibility to settle strikes. Do I think there's any way to prevent this sort of thing in the future? Command could stop jerking us around and just cut to the chase and offer us a fair deal next time. Or I don't know. <laughs> ha. We could uh, transition to a completely different kind of economy where money doesn't exist, everyone's needs are met, and people are motivated to pursue community service and self-improvement instead of chasing after wealth and power. 
What are the chances that's ever going to happen?